In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a dynamic advanced search feature, as you can see over here on the left, in the listable theme. So as you can see, there shows a checkbox next to it, and then it will automatically show these fields. So along with this, we're going to have a locate me field right here, and then we're also going to have a search radius field right here as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is to go ahead and go to the section list and remove that one. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. We'll come over here. You see here's the advanced search. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable this one for now. So if we need to revert back to it later, we can. Fresh listings, you'll see it's gone. So let's go ahead and add a new one. So we want this to show below our other one, as you can see, main filters area. So let's go ahead and add a new one. Advanced search demo. And then I'm going to set this to main filters area. And I'm going to set this to a higher we'll call it lower priority, so actually a higher number so that it shows below that first one because the default is 10. Set that to 11, save it, done. Now let's go ahead and go back to the page, refresh it. Now let's go ahead and start this. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to need to set up the dynamic checkbox for the actual field itself. Come in here, advanced search demo. So we're going to want to show the label. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the demo term because that's not what we want to show in the label. And then down here you'll see the checkbox. Checkbox we're going to show. We want it unchecked initially, so we're going to set it to that. Now as you can see we have the checkbox there. It's not checked. Let's go ahead and save that. And now we can come back in here and start adding our fields. First field we're going to add is a locate me field. So let's go ahead and click that on there. We'll get this new one here. We'll go ahead and make it full width. Then we'll go ahead and click this to edit it. Let's go ahead and change the field type. Let's change that to a select standard locate me. And then we'll put location just for label. And then we'll just say any location, which is the placeholder that we'll show here. Not going to have any default value. I'm going to go over here. And the search source we're going to select is the location right there. It's one of the default ones. We'll go ahead and set that up. Now, you'll notice under here for the type configuration, this is where we have the Google API key that we're going to set. And we can set all these different features right here. So the result type, I'm going to leave that there so all the results return from Google. Um, we'll come back in there. I'm just going to select the type preference because I want it to specify it by a city whenever it actually locates. So we're going to set that. And then, worst case scenario, I'll enable the fallback for the latitude and longitude so that we have that as well. Let's go ahead and go back here. And I actually need to set my API key. So let's go ahead and go and grab this from the settings. Come back here. Go ahead and save that. And it does require a Google API key in order to do the search here. And as you'll notice, just all this does is that it will prompt the user to locate them and then it will locate them using the uh, Google Maps API. So now we're going to go ahead and add another field here. And this other field we're going to do, we're going to do a search radius one. So we're going to change this to a slider field. And then we'll set this search radius. Go ahead and show the label because we want them to know what that's going to be. And we're going to come over here and for our search source, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. And at the bottom you'll see there's a custom locate, location search radius. Set that to that. Over here on the type config, this is where we're going to configure it. If you're using kilometers, you can change this. If you want to use miles, which is the default, you can leave it at that. For the minimum, I'm going to set the minimum as, we'll say, 10. Uh, maximum, we'll set it at 500. And then the interval, which is how many times it changes between each one, I'm going to set that to 10. Now on here for the tooltip, I'm going to want it to always show the tooltip because I always want them to be able to see what it is. And we're going to leave that at, at the default. So I also want it to show if it's going to be miles or kilometers on here as well. So I'm actually going to append that to it. And if you click this here, you'll notice it gives you a little bit more information about it. So because I want it to have a space between the number and whatever I'm going to put there, you actually have to select and copy this to use this. Reason being is that when the sanitation is done, it actually removes any kind of spaces, and that's done by WordPress internally. So in order to keep that space, we have to use this 
um, this actual text right here, which is always available here in the description by clicking the question mark. So I'll check that and I'll change that to miles. And now you'll notice it actually shows that with a space. If I didn't do that, it would not show with the space between it. We also have two other options here. Normally the formatting is whenever you're outputting a number. Um, if you're higher than, you know, a thousand and you want it to be formatted with a comma, stuff like that, you would enable this. Or maybe if it's a, um, you know, financial amount, certain amount of money, that's where you'd want to do that. The slider indicator, which we're not going to use on this one, but I'll just show you as an example. Normally you don't want the tooltip on there, so you'll take that away. You'll notice the slider indicator gives you a little, just a little area that shows above it that instead of the actual tooltip. So I'm going to turn that off because I'm going to stick with the actual tooltip. Change that. And we'll go ahead and save it. And then let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Adjust that. Bring this up here. Actually has that there. And let's actually set the default. That's always a good thing to do. And the best thing to normally do is to take whatever the middle is of your min and max. So min is 10, 500. We'll just say 250 as a general sense. So we'll set it to 250. And you'll notice that'll actually auto update and it'll actually show you on there where it's at. Now, if you notice, we've got the tooltip is actually overlapping a little bit over this location field. So you could do two things here. You could adjust the size of this. So let's actually see. It's a little bit difficult to grab here and I'll fix that in an upcoming update. Ah. So to fix this first, what I'm going to do, because I can't actually get in there to grab this handle, it's because this text field actually overlaps where that's at. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of margin here so that it actually, you'll notice now it's not going to overlap our thing. So now I should be able to, there we go. See, now I can grab that and that's not an issue. And normally it's, it's a good idea to go ahead and put some margin, some padding in here, just so it kind of gives you a little bit of space. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that there. And I'm actually going to go ahead and change this on the search radius as well. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of margin as well on that just to make everything kind of look similar. And the good part here is too is that because we have this checkbox, so I'll go ahead and hide that, you'll notice it kind of makes it look indented a little bit underneath here, which is, you know, once you actually have that and you switch here, you'll see what I mean. So let's go ahead and go back into edit mode. And so I'll bring this back up here just to show you how I would actually handle this. So as you notice, this tooltip kind of overlaps this a little bit. So to fix that, you can either pull down and actually make this field bigger, or what you can actually do is you can come in here and we'll just keep it right there like that. And we'll go on the search radius and we'll go back to spacing. And so on here, I actually want to add a larger margin for up here up top. So we'll just come in here, set 10 and we'll go over here, set 10 on this one, set 10 on the bottom. And then on the top margin, I'm actually going to set that to like 25. And now you'll notice it pushes it down a little bit further and actually gives us some more room here. So you have a few options in the way you can handle that and actually do it. If you wanted to manually enter this as well, you could also do it under the styles and you could do it under the wrapper and just add your own custom one you want. So if you want to do the margin top, then you could actually come in here, set that. But I did add this easy interface to do this right here. And there's some more videos that will go over specifically spacing, specifically styles. I just kind of wanted to quickly go over that for you. Go ahead and save that. And now, during all of this, how we were messing around here, it kind of messed up some of our filters. So let's just go ahead and save this. Go ahead and clear all these filters. Refresh the page. And now you'll notice here we are on here. And now let's go ahead and turn off editing mode. And now you notice this is what the end user is going to see. And so they'll come in here and they say, okay, well... Uh, let me go ahead and do an advanced search and say, okay, any location. Let me get a location here. I've already accepted it, but it will pop up and ask the user, you know, do you allow them to see this location? So now, as you'll notice, because I am in Orlando, Florida, and I selected the city, that is what Google Maps actually returned, which is that configuration value set. You know, you'll notice the default is 250 miles, so we can see everything, Jacksonville, Miami, everything within 250 miles. If I go ahead and change that, we'll change it to say 500 miles. It'll update the listings, and now you can see everything within that. Or you can even bring it down 50 miles, and it brings it just straight into where you're actually at. So that's how you actually would add a dynamic section. And I'll go into how to create dynamic fields in another video, but that's how you create a dynamic section with a search radius, a locate me field, and the listable theme. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you in some of the other videos.